Hey everybody, it's Pauline here. I am going to uh, paint the sides of my painting and uh, that's not that exciting, but I thought I'd have a chat with you while I'm doing it so I can um, make it more interesting for myself as well. I actually don't mind painting the sides. I find it really relaxing and um, <clears throat> for me, it's, sometimes it's a really great way to get back into my painting practice. I was away for the weekend visiting my dad on the coast and family and delivering a painting, two paintings actually, to two different galleries. <clears throat> and just preparing for that and everything. Well, it's been a while since I've been in my studio in the creative mindset. So this kind of helps me bridge the gap. And um, where do I want to put this? I'll put this over here. Um, so this painting I I tested a couple colors on here and then wiped it off because I was trying to get gray and cream um, in on the side and I I'm kind of longing for the time when I actually come up with a color that I can use for a lot of different paintings but I haven't come up with that yet because I guess I need to buy kind of a mother can of paint that I can, well, I guess the goal is not to actually have to keep mixing paint for the sides. And of course, then if I got a big can, it would, would um, be more cost effective. But right now I'm using artist paint and um, I just mix whatever I want that works. A lot of my work is shown without a frame. I do like the look of a frame more recently as my work shows more and sells more. And I guess too, Last year I took CVP and I worked on create a visionary program with Nick Wilton and I worked on um, some boards cradled panels actually they weren't cradled that's the first time I've ever worked on flat boards before and I actually really liked it because there's a sense of freedom when it's not you know on a canvas or on a frame you just get that it's not as permanent feeling and so then you find that you sort of work more freely anyway of course then I created some work that I really really liked and I had to frame it and that's where I started really noticing that I like how a piece of art looks framed so that was kind of a good entry point because the cradled panels have to be framed they have to, sorry not the cradled panels the um the the uncradled panels they have to be framed in a floater frame and uh anyway so that was my entry point into you know kind of being forced to frame work and i like it so though my bigger works are all unframed presently. What I'd like to do is actually start framing them, but bit by bit, right? Got to grow into my boots, if you will. Anyway, um, so it's, it, this is looking a bit picky, which it not isn't usually, but this painting has had nine lives and um, I finally got it at a place where I'm willing to leave it be. Um, it's funny because a couple of weeks ago I thought it was finished and I liked it and then I thought yes it's finished but I don't like it and I haven't been looking at it for a few weeks and now I like it again. And I find that process to be really interesting because, I don't know, in a way our moods are, make it seem like we're kind of fickle. And um, I just think that it's important to leave a painting be for a while so that you don't 
paint over something that you wish you wouldn't have. And, uh, it, you know, I'm saying that while also knowing that I paint over my canvases again and again and again until I get what I want, which is always a surprise to me what it is that I want. Um, yeah, so, because I've given this many lives and not really concerned myself too much with that, there's a lot of texture on the sides. So I sanded it off today. And so there's a little bit of pitting I noticed still, which I don't mind because if my goal is to, if my goal is to start framing them or at least having a frame available to show the piece in, than what the sides look like up close and personal doesn't matter. So normally I don't have such a textured bottom, but I started sanding it carefully because this is canvas, um, just so that I could get the, the smoothest side possible painted. And I don't like the lumps like, you know, I'm all for my process and not being picky while I'm painting. I don't mind spilling. I do mind lumps of paint on the side though. But um, I'm painting around the corner a little bit so that there's nothing showing underneath. But this will get a second coat. I'm using an angled brush. Uh, some people, well, there's lots of different ways of doing this. You can even tape them off, which I've started to try doing on smaller panels to see how taping works. I suspect, because I haven't pulled the tape off yet, that a lot of uh, times there's going to be paint that sneaks through under the tape, but I suppose that's better than a big lump of paint on the side. So... But I use an angled brush because that makes going along the edge so much easier. It's just like painting uh, your crown molding or up near your ceiling. And what else? What else can I tell you about this? Oh, I know what I wanted to say. I drag my pinky along my canvas so that it keeps my my hand steady which is how I I get a nice smooth line and I don't ever worry about going over the edge into the painting that finger is my uh, guide to keep my hand straight while I'm painting the side also like to make sure that I'm nice and comfortable sitting wear my apron just so that I can clean my fingers or you know deal with any accidents I have water handy behind me here and a couple of paper towels just in case something happens and um, I'm gonna to have to get picky with the side here eventually maybe not while I have you with me because it'd be painstaking to watch So, yeah, you know, I was sanding this today and it could have still been sanded more uh, as I'm looking at just, you know, how smooth this is. But it's all a process, right? Like, I just kind of started sanding, I think, on the sides this year. And you have to be careful um, this particular canvas has been beaten up a few times and, uh, you know, I don't want to rip the canvas or puncture it or stretch it, but I'll even sand the surface of the canvas if I want to remove paint or distress the look of the paint. 
and uh, but I'll, I'm careful about that. I usually put a board on the inside. Now you know this canvas is um, got crossbars on the back, so I can't just put. I'm going to get into this tiny bit a bit later. Uh, it's got crossbars on the back, so I can't just support the canvas with a big board because this is in the way. But I do have a small board, and while I'm sanding the surface, I move my hand around. And believe it or not, that board that I use is a clipboard. And it's brilliant because it's thin and I can put it almost all the way up to the edge of the canvas because you know the stretcher bars in there underneath, they are on an angle. So I can slide my um, thin clipboard almost right underneath the canvas uh, and up against sort of like uh, the stretcher bar is on an angle here and the canvas is here so I can get that clipboard in here and that gives me a surface to press against so that I reduce the potential for stretching my canvas uh, by putting pressure on it while I'm sanding and then I move it around and what's nice about the um, clipboard is that it has that big clip on it, so it acts as a handle for my, for, so I just grab that like a handle and I can move the clipboard around while the hand that's moving the sander moves around as well. I actually really love sanding and scraping. Canvas is not the best for doing that. I discovered how much I loved scraping and sanding when I was in CVP, uh, working on board. But I love a problem to solve, so when I discovered that I really loved that, I wanted to see whether or not I could um, do that on a canvas and that's where I came up with the clipboard idea which works but I'm also working on another idea of um, supporting the canvas for tough rugged brutal <laughs> take out your bad day on a canvas without worrying about ripping it to shreds um, so I'll if it works, I'll let you know. If it doesn't work, I'll tell you what not to bother to try. This is good, I've only got one side left, so you know, if you've gotten bored, it's almost over. But hopefully, I've shared a few things that might be useful to know. Um, yeah, I think this is definitely going to need a second coat. Uh, the color that I, I eventually mix for this, which I really like, I like it for the side. Uh, when I mixed it at first, it was a gray that I was, I started to make lighter and lighter and lighter. And of course, if you can see this painting, you can see that I have gray in it. And, um, but I didn't want it that dark gray that I've got in here. I'm really enjoying painting, um, the sides of my paintings light. It's something that I saw, um, being involved in a couple of online groups over the last few years with some UK folks. And, oops, I like the look. I mean, it was a bit of a jump at first because I used to actually paint the sides of my paintings black. And I didn't 
do that consciously. I saw somebody that did it. I probably saw a lot of work done with the sides painted black and you know, going back a few years, black was really fashionable and you know, we rotate through fashions anyway, so this could, you know, not be that cool one day. But you can always paint the signs over again. And um, anyway, there was one time, I think it was two years ago, when I was painting the sides of my paintings black, knowing that now I kind of like the light colored, I just wasn't confident about it. And I painted my paintings black, and they were really small paintings. They were only like, I don't know, maybe six by six or something. And man, could I see the difference. The, the trapped feeling that, that I got from this artwork with black all around the sides, it was just like night and day. Like it, it, um, it was really obvious to me what happens to the look of a painting if black's not appropriate. And it was the size of the painting too. It was a small, uh, maybe a, eight by eight or even yeah it was eight by eight and it just you know looking at it from a corner it just looked trapped so it pushed me then to paint over it in a lighter color that I felt I could I could manage the risk going light and so I've never looked back since uh, but I do find that choosing my colors for the side still a bit of a um, not a dilemma, but it's not, you know, open the can, crack it open, here we go. I still do like to choose a color that I think is going to work really well with the painting. And, um, yeah, so this was a gray, and then I also chose, don't forget those creases in the corner, um, I never do forget those. Okay, so this was a gray and it was also a cream, kind of a cool cream that I took from the painting. I mixed them together and I really like those colors on this. So I'm just gonna let that dry for a while and then I'll go back and do the second coat and the, the little picky stuff on the side that's too painstaking to make you go through it with me. Anyway, thanks for stopping by. I hope that you got a couple of helpful tips, um, not just about painting side, but just about whatever it was that I was talking about. Looking forward to watching this back and see, see what else I was talking about in this. So I hope you guys are doing well, and um, until next time, thanks for stopping by. Bye.